Hello, and welcome to the RollWise podcast, your show where we discuss tabletop role-playing games and other things that are in the role-playing space. Now, I'm Mike, one of your hosts, and I'm joined by Brent and Jeff, my two good friends. Say hi, guys. Hello, everybody. Hello. And uh, this week, we're going to be doing a little bit of a post-mortem dive into the game A-State by Handiwork Games. Uh, those of you that follow the channel um, had noticed that we played A-State, a simple one-shot called Nicely Done on Monday, uh, just to kind of give ourselves uh, an attempt to dive into the rules and really kind of get our feet wet. Since this was a since this is a game that's based on the Forge in the Dark system, and none of us really have experience with it. So uh, today's discussion is going to be kind of how we felt about the game, what we thought went really well, what we didn't feel went so well. And obviously these uh, impressions come from a single session of play as opposed to a long ca campaign or anything like that. So obviously, um, if you like hearing kind of our impressions and based on our, our simple playthroughs, you know, like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. If you have experience playing these kind of games, Blades in the Dark, Forge in the Dark, or even better, if you've played A State, uh, let us know how it went. Um, we played this game based on a recommendation from one of the frequent viewers of the show. And so we really want to say thank you for recommending the game because this was definitely not on any of our radars. And it was a unique experience to get out of the typical type of role playing games that we tend to explore the most. And I think that's really cool. So I think we can kind of jump into the game, kind of what we think and all that kind of stuff. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and just give kind of a, a reminder for people if they're not sure about like what A-State is and like and who it's for and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start there and then we'll get into kind of the general discussion. Um, so A-State was produced by Handiwork Games and it's actually the second edition. There was an earlier edition back in the early 2000s. Um, it's a very dystopian future world that they present in the game. And it's kind of interesting because it's it doesn't present uh, it doesn't present a very good look for humanity. Everything does take place in this, po this post-apocalyptic, I, I wouldn't say post-apocalyptic, is it? There was something that happened yeah, yeah there was an apocalypse that happened. Yeah, say and that's right. There was so there's a post-apocalyptic uh, location known as the city, very ominous. Um, and the, of course, the city is just this claustrophobic megalopolis of everything kind of on, on top of each other. Um, but also, there's a lot of water, which uh, bothers me. Getting my feet wet like that would just bother me all the time. Um, there's uh, a lot about this game to create a sense of unease, tension. Um, it's very much about the survival of you and your fellow troublemakers on your specific corner in the world and trying to make this one little tiny section of the world safe, or as at least it's safe as you can make it. Um, however, the tone of the game is pretty dark. It's, it explores a lot of, of the dark psychological components of it. You know, sometimes it's a lot of melancholy. Sometimes it's a lot of that frustration and helplessness and all those kind of things. So I can't say that this is one of those games that you're going to walk away from feeling like, oh, I'm a bright hero. I saved the castle from the dragon and everything worked out the way it's supposed to. Uh, the game really, the game is really for those people that like those character driven narratives that have a lot of complexity to them and a lot of interwoven stories with the world that you collaboratively make. Um, and so it is quite it honestly, it is quite the impressive game and very different than what I expected it to be. And so I think that's a pretty good place to start. So for you guys, I mean, not having heard of a state before, when you got into this, uh, Brent, you especially were the one who offered to run it. Uh, what did you think about the game? What were your initial impressions? How did it present itself to you? Um, I find the forged in the dark world is a little intimidating. So reading through it a few times, um, I was nervous going into the game, but it was fun once we started playing and once we kind of got working through the rules. Mm -hmm. I think mechanically it's a game that you have to play quite a few times to start to get the hang of it. Um, I think you have to build up a rhythm between the GM and the players. Um, I don't think the game is... I think there's a lot of character things that will happen in the game, but the real driving part that will be for any A-State game is going to be the corner. Um, the characters, and I think the, to, much to the point where I think the corner becomes the focus and it's less mm -hmm. character driven and more just location driven. Like in reading the book throughout the, the stories that you're telling, the goal is to improve the corner. So your character actions are less about self-improvement, maybe a little bit of self-improvement, but really about improving the environment around you for the people, which is interesting. And it also lends for a very kind of, um, 
more sandboxy type of game because the characters start to be driven on this is what we need to do for our corner mm -hmm. um versus like the gm being like well this is what i have planned for you today like mm -hmm. they may have he may present story hooks um at the time or they may present story hooks but they're not going to it's not necessarily always going to be the story them that drive the story it's the corner and the characters trying to make the corner better that is going to drive your story. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting to me. The setting, um, the kind of Dickensian sci-fi um, setting that they've presented, um, I wasn't that inspired by it, uh, but it was kind of fun. Some of the stuff in it was kind of fun. Um, mm -hmm. It's very uh, human on human sort of tragedy, which is kind of one of those things that I do like. Um, it was an interesting game. The setting's interesting and different. Um, and the mechanics are very different than games I've played before. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it's true. I mean, it, it, it felt very bleak. Like, it didn't really feel like... I mean, if, if you were looking for that ray of sunshine, you really had to look pretty hard. Um, and... Yeah, bleak to, the point, bleak to the point to me where it's, like, hard to insert... I think it would be hard to insert levity into your games. Like, because it's bleak to the point of just being... It's not Wraith the Oblivion bleak, which was the most depressing game ever so much so that never nobody ever played it but it is pretty bleak to the point where there's a lot of things that are bad and yeah. so interjecting comedy might be a little hard sometimes yeah you'd have to i think the players honestly in that case would have to be the ones to find it mm -hmm. um you know because it's a group of people working closely like you said to help make their circumstances better right not not necessarily get rich by killing monsters or other creatures, but by doing things to make, you know, the living conditions that are already horrible, slightly more bearable, mm -hmm. you know, like, like in our one shot, you know, stop the person kidnapping kids off the street to use them as child labor, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, that's not a light topic. Like it's going to be hard no. to throw a joke in there once in a while. It's, it is tricky. Yeah. Yeah, no, in in the middle of the thing, no, but like like pre bad stuff and post bad stuff, I think every once in a while you could have a tension breaker. But mm -hmm. I, I I don't know necessarily what they'd be, but it's that it's the the probably the back and forth between the characters as mm -hmm. as the players start developing, you know, their own personalities. This very much feels like a campaign game to me. Like mm -hmm. I don't think it's the best thing to run for a one shot, and I I don't know that having not played blades in the dark it, it the little bit i know you know feels like it would be a little more campaigny as well mm -hmm. and, and that's fine I, there's nothing wrong with, with with having campaigns if you have somebody that wants to write the scenarios and you know players that want to mm -hmm. you know fall in love with the the thing but i it isn't that you can't do one shots in here it's that i there's probably other systems that you could use that are a little more User friendly? I, I, it wasn't. I, I'm not. God, I feel like I'm saying bad things, but I, I had fun. The mechanics weren't too complex, but it, the game made me want to play more as the characters that we had. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I didn't want to just okay, one shot, disposable, moving on, kind of thing. Yeah, and I can I can definitely relate to that. I think as a player, I was like, oh, the mission is already over. Like that's. Okay. Well, that was, that was fun. You know, it's, it seems like I feel with, and this is what's interesting about the game to me is that it's, it, you know, it very much enjoys the fiction of the game. And that's what they really recommend is that, you know, you really, you really go with the fiction and you try to then, if you, if you want to do something fun in, in the fiction side, then you try to figure out how to mechanically make that work. And that's really that fiction first approach. And I think that, yeah. you know, one of the, the hard parts about it, for me is like, you know, as a, as a D and D player and everything like that, I had basically like, Oh, I go into the, the dungeon and I try, you know, go root around in there for a long time. And I, you know, have fun and do all that stuff. Whereas this was just kind of like, once you set up the series of events, you know, you, you basically are like, okay, very much like your heist movie. You're like, okay, I got the crew together. I do it. I, we get our plan set up. We execute our plan. If we're lucky, we get to use some cool flashback scenes uh, we didn't have any flashback scenes in this particular scenario, but that's important to to try to get those in there. And then and then it's done, and you all walk away with your bag of cash, or in this case, a uh, you know yep. gaggle of children that you save from the bad guys. You know, and so it's like, and then it's like it's really encapsulated into that little that little window there. And it felt yeah. like 
it, it felt like, you know, there was just so much more that could be done. And of course, as you said, campaign style, and I think we talked about this before, is that you would just even in that little, that little glimpse of it, I, you know, my, my GM brain was like, oh, I now have threats that I could present as long-term adversaries trying to undermine the success of your corner. Oh well, yeah. You have the I, main lady, you have the gang that you interrupted their operations. You have the people that are the backer of either of either of those two groups. Um, you have the people from your corner that may have lost trust in you for not finding their kids. And they felt that maybe because there's the mob found them, <laughs> you know, maybe they're like, what right. do we need you for? You know, what are you worth worthwhile lost finder doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, there were so many directions that this could be taken in that were very fascinating to me that I thought that was really cool that you could then, that's how the game, that's how the game unrolls from that point forward. Um, but I think as a one shot, it was, it just was a weird one shot because it just felt like, Oh, we're done. Well, I mean, it was meant to be quick to give you a taste <laughs> uh-huh. and yep. I, I've never I, played a game. For, like on, for like. me at least <laughs> the, the taste was effective because I did kind of want to play more. I did kind of want to explore my character because I, you know, we only played for about an hour. Um, but by the end of the hour, I was wanting to have more opportunities to use the character, uh, mm-hmm. build a little bit more backstory. Because my take on the character was a little different than I, I think when you guys read, you know, what the character did. Not that that matters, but mm-hmm. I, I wanted to explore that. Like the, mm-hmm. the, the, there was there was some neat stuff that I wanted to explore, which which I think is good. I think it's a strength. It's it's very much a storytelling game, though. It's really about the stories and less about the specific actions, right? Because mm-hmm. we kind of failed forward. I think, as you said, Mike, when we were yeah. playing, like like we accomplished some of the goals, most of the goals, but definitely not all of them, right? That mm-hmm. wasn't that wasn't the smoothest thing we did, but. The yeah. kids weren't working for the person anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, we we ultimately <laughs> achieved that, and and obviously we had a clock to kind of help us along. But I think that probably some of the strengths that you'll see in the game is going to be during that downtime phase where you get to kind of explore your character a little bit more deeply and then build yeah. that backstory. Um, and I think that that's a that's a really interesting part of it that we didn't really get to see. But I think that you know, at least you got to understand it. And we also didn't get to build the corner. And based on what I read for how the corners operate and everything like that, the corners got some serious complexity to it. You know, like yeah. there's factions, it's, there's yep. tiers, and there's all kinds of stuff that goes on. In <laughs> yeah, the heart of the game is really, I think I think it is a campaign game, strongly leans towards being a campaign game because the corner is really the heart of it and building the corner over the course of your campaign is really the heart of the game. So I don't know. It, it's definitely not a, like I would never run this as like an, a convention game, like a one shot. Like it's not that game where you're going to be like, Hey, let's pick up a state and play a game. Cause it's not, I don't think it's a one shot game. Well, it, it feels like it, it just feels like at least the setup for this. I mean, you could, I, I think you could do a one shot. I just think that, the setup just, I don't know, is feels as gratifying for the purpose. Like the goal of the game for you to build the corner doesn't feel like it's as satisfied. Right. In a there's, one just, shot. there's just no way to get the depth that the setting offers, I think, in a one yeah. shot. I mean, you could, you could do a one shot. I agree. You can do a one shot. I mean, we mm-hmm. did it. Yeah, we did but a one I just, shot. I, I just don't think it's going to be, I just don't think it lends itself to the game's strengths as much mm-hmm. as a campaign game. And I think it really design wise, um like there are certain games i mean and this is this is kind of the 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 modern like breakdown is there's games that are one shot games and games that are or campaign games and i think this leans more towards being a game that's really better played um in multiple sessions yeah. um with a, a a more detailed story yeah uh, kinda, i, I kinda, mean you, you not, could... not necessarily planned out but Right. More of a detailed story anticipated, I guess, is what I would say. Yeah, because you could kind of run it like a series of one-shots and then have intermediate sessions in between 
where you do get into the downtime mechanic and well, that's how that helps. But I mean, character that's a, development and corner development. You know what I mean? Like, but I mean, that is a campaign. That's the, but that's, yeah. but that's oh, a state, campaign. right? That's yeah. the cycle. That is it's like right. basically mission downtime, possible interlopers. I think that, that yeah, you can have interruptions to your downtime. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, it, that, I mean, that's exactly how the game sh is designed to run. Agree. Yeah. But there, but obviously with the arcs that you provide, there should be, you know, outside threats that are also moving their pieces too you know it's just mm -hmm. um, right i think that I, and i think that's cool and i think that that's a fun part of the game and in terms of like my own thing i think there could be a lot of intrigue in this game and i think it would be a blast to have the type of factions all vying for to assert your troublemakers oh, yeah. control of the, the corner i think as a gm it would be a, a tremendous amount of fun and i just yeah, there's feel all kinds of stuff. and then the, you know you not only have your your party your party's interactions mm -hmm. you have their individual interactions with the corner you have their interactions outside of the corner, right? Because they probably have friends or family or mm -hmm. work stuff or other things, you know, that happened outside of there that they still have connections to that may, just like life, present competing priorities, right? Mm -hmm. well, I, can, I need to do this for the corner, but I need to do this for my grandma. You know what I mean? And they don't, they don't yeah. fully balance. Like, yeah. like the, there's a lot there. It, it did make me want to explore you know, more it, games using the system. But it, I guess it brings, that brings me to my next topic because I think it, yeah. we're all in agreement that it's, it's a good game that we like that, that. I think Brent, that piece of advice you mentioned, don't expect to get a state right on your first play. No. You have to, you have to like <laughs> get it over a few yeah. games. Like, you know, try it, try maybe four or five, six sessions before you start going. If, this is the game you well, shouldn't. We play. were a half an hour in until I, ha I had regrets from the first five minutes, where I was yeah. like, I should have done that differently. Yeah. So, so it's a it's a game that you know you're going to have to like, and if you have one of those great memories that can pick up all the different things that you have, or or you have this one of those, you know, like you narratively you gravitate towards that fiction first play style, and then you've got somebody that really knows the rules that can help you do all that. You might have a different ramp up period for yeah. it. Yes, but like it's, I feel like if you're just new to this expect a few sessions to get used to it well it's but, one of those games that being narratively heavy it depends a lot on your ability to improv certain situations mm -hmm. and like it's just not something that as a as a D, &D gm or someone who's new like i would say this definitely isn't shouldn't this would be hard if this is like your first game that you came into in my opinion if you had never done a role-playing game before and a guy was like yeah you should come to our first session of blades in the dark or a state I feel like you're probably going to run into. You're probably going to be like, well, um, that's, I mean, somebody yeah. might be able to do I mean, it. But they're just yeah. naturally gifted at, at, yeah. at, you know, role play that type of. A lot of thing, people respond you know? weirdly to being put on the spot, though. So. Yeah, sure. and and you might find that you you actually do better if this was your first introduction to it because you're you're told basically focus on the narrative, don't focus on the rules. And if you come from D and D, you're like, I have a character sheet. It doesn't tell me everything that I can do. What can I do? <laughs> I still think that improv part, that that moment yeah. where it's like, be creative now, um, is always going to be hard. hard. Yeah, yeah, it's always there, hard. There, so there, there are there are people, there are there are you know people that have done theater or improv, or there are some people that have received some sort of training that would benefit them for that. But it's not in my in my experience the average person. And like you said, getting put on the spot, like yeah. you know, you have all this freedom but you don't know what's right or what's wrong or what it's hard. Yeah. It's, and it's hard for me. I did. I didn't do great in the first half of the thing. I, I did a little better later, but I think you did fine. <laughs> uh, we all did fine. That's what I would say. And you have to understand that. Like, if you look at that, like breakdown, I don't remember there's multiple books that have it in, but like breakdowns of the types of players you get in a role-playing game. Mm -hmm. um like those five you know yeah, like the person players. who does it for the exploration the rewards yeah. the killing of other things like there are people that this game will not appeal to sure <laughs> no it is not a game for a couple of those archetypes you you have to you'd have to like story yeah exactly you'd have to like story to narrative heavy games yeah. yeah i yeah i think we talked about that on an earlier podcast episode it's pretty it's a pretty interesting breakdown of the player types um, I do think the one thing that I think might be a weakness to the introduction of this game is let's talk about nicely done as a scenario by itself. Now, in terms of the scenario, like, I mean, if we compared, like we had a quick start scenario for aliens, in which we ran from Free League, you know, Chariot of the Gods, 
And that was well-structured, awesome, achieved all of its goals. And I think you guys would want to, you're going to want to play Devourer of Worlds or whatever it is in a month or two when I got that all, all prepped. Um, but that was, that was good, right? I think that felt like a really good introductory one. Well, it felt How like you a, guys... complete, a complete introduction. It felt like mm -hmm. a full, yeah, complete introduction. So, it, so how do you guys feel that this nicely done started it, you? I mean, do you feel well, like it was a good introduction? Do you feel do like you take this one, Brent, or you want me to start? You can start because <laughs> I have well, a bit to say. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll I'll keep I'll keep it brief. Um, like for what it was, I didn't mind it. But I think I was expecting more, and especially not getting to play around with downtime, with with not being able to do some more stuff with our corner, which, mm -hmm. as we just mentioned, are are two things that are kind of important to the game. Um, I, I think it. I th I wish it had more. That that, that I, I wish maybe it was a, a short little one like that, and then we have mm -hmm. some downtime and do some stuff on the corner, and then another short little one would have felt like a more complete view of. What the system has to offer, um, than than what we got, if that okay. makes sense. Yeah. So basically, it just felt like it felt like it was, maybe it was too narrow and scoped. it was too abbreviated. I, yeah. I, I think. I think it. Okay. Well, I think for so one of the things uh, the same poster that suggested it's suggested is that nicely done is supposed to be a game that bridges the gap between the first edition and the second edition like it uses some of the first edition rules to try and um usher people into oh. the, the second edition if that okay, is true that. if well see that's that's the problem <laughs> if that is true they should make that clear because like you pointed out afterwards um after the stream on monday like the st stats in nicely done don't match the stats in the second edition rule book Mm -hmm. um which caused us some confusion through like we we just basically played through it head. like forged we, ahead we, like we always do but um yeah. but it did make for some confusion after the game as i was trying to kind of gather my thoughts and even during the game for you like you said none of those stats are on my character sheet um and i didn't really understand that until later when we discussed it uh and i think that should be made clear if that's the goal of it like it should be made clear that you need to be familiar with both rule sets that that being said i think it was well written for a short one sheet uh one sheet game but mm -hmm. it, it it definitely didn't give you enough of like what makes a state a state um it was more of a primer on just sort of like uh just a quick mission and not really the heart of what makes a state a state like nothing about the corner um, they should have had some about what, what to do with the corner, I think, in it. Um, even really expanding on the front of the, 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 like, and they say you can do it yourself is what they say in the, in the A-State book is like, if you want to do more of what A-State is about, go ahead and interject that. And it's like, well, that's not really not what I feel like a one shot should be. Because one of the reasons I look at a one shot is to see how do you think we should play the game? Um, mm -hmm. And that allows me to write my scenarios based on what I what the information that you've presented. And I think it just didn't do much justice to the actual system um, with how limited it was. It said you could do all this stuff, but it's all you know voluntary. Like yeah. like it has this section, this paragraph that says if you want to more know more about investigating the um, investigating what's going on in the block, you can do that. But that's not. But that's up to you. Like there really should probably have been an introduction to the characters, and then if I hadn't been so nervous about playing the actual game, I probably would have introduced it as um, you heard a rumor and then role played investigating the actual like finding out about what happened. You know, mm -hmm. this person and everything, and then investigating the location, doing all your roles then, and then actually doing the break in, um, break in and break out of the children. Mm -hmm. Um, and then probably maybe I would have even done a block part if I, if I had thought about it, but I was just yeah. trying to run the one shot and I just don't think the one shot does the system very much justice. Um, they yeah. have a couple other one shots now. It looks like that. I, I must've missed when I first looked at the game because I mean, nicely done, uh, like apparently That's... won won awards and stuff. So I was like, well, this seems like the one that we should play. Um, but <laughs> I was less impressed by it than. I would have thought, I guess. Yeah, that, that that same phrase. For what it was, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but what it was was kind of short and missing some of the parts. Yeah, kind of short. And really I wanted missed, to learn about. <laughs> yeah, kind of short and missed the heart. I think missed the heart of the game. 
Yeah. yeah. At least, at least in our opinion, right? Like, right. I mean, no, I, it, right. and, well, yeah, and I, I mean, feel, yeah. and, and maybe I'm what I feel, shit, and I want to be clear, I'm not shitting on the game. I think it's pretty fun and I think it has a lot of potential. I just don't think that that specific scenario, mm. um, really exemplified that that potential which there's three other adventures now i see on the website which i may have missed before yeah. i don't know um gone to the dogs the machine and strange little girl uh versus cheese off cheese off like those three adventures might be better actually than maybe. nicely done well maybe and you know what maybe uh because because i feel like the the game like nicely done like i i do feel like it was just there was just something missing for it and i also feel like i want to get a better handle on this this game somewhat i don't know why i feel like either the blades in the dark slash forge in the dark systems i i kind of want to get a little bit better understanding of how they work because i like the i like fiction slash narrative heavy games and that seems to be where i've landed recently give me a bunch of crunch and i seem to be like oh god <laughs> you know not to say and don't get me wrong anybody that thinks that nice or that thinks that a state is an easy read it is a lot. It is very dense in the types of content that it presents in, in terms of the rules that it has. So it's not that it's a rules light game. It's just that the, the, the play is really that narrative based and it's less like, oh, I, I go into the dungeon and I kick down the door. What does the dungeon do? You know, like I, you know, I, I, that can be fun too, but it's just, it's not the same D and D style heroic fantasy. Yeah. I think the, I think the mechanics are simple. It's just, there's a lot of them. Like mm -hmm. there's mechanics for the corner. There's mechanics for running the adventure and like yeah. making the plan. And then there's mechanics for downtime. And like, so there's a lot of, I wouldn't call it a rules light game. I would call it a narrative forward game. Like the mm -hmm. rules try yeah. to support pushing you into the narrative. Yeah. And, and I think that nicely done, probably if we had spent the time to like really like in like build it out from that central premise, you probably could make a really good short adventure out of that um, for the nice, you know, for that position. But I think this that just the sliver that we had, I think there was it kind of. Well, I don't. Me. I'm. I kind of think that that I think that's one of the things that makes it questionable to me is like if you are going to write a pre-written scenario there sh it shouldn't be a ton of editing on well i mean there's gonna be editing but there shouldn't be a ton of extra responsibility added to the person that's running the game where you have to like add an extra 14 pages to this 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 scenario that they wrote which is what i think you would have to have done with nicely done together. well i think to get a really a good look i mean at yeah. what the system is yeah sure. and i and i honestly i think banter cards would do well in this uh you know, just just to have like that initial banter in the beginning to help you kind of get into the kind of character that you want. That would be a lot of fun. Um, that's my that's my process. I like banter cards these days, apparently. Uh, okay, so so I think that that's a I, I think that's a pretty good, you know, understanding of how we feel about a state. Now, obviously, you know, a state is a it's a very different from our normal. Um, types of games that we've played in the past, but we're excited to give those types of games a try. So if you also have some neat games that you want us to look at, obviously we're building a list, like kind of a wish list of games that we want to play, uh, but we'll play anything. And especially if it's a style of game that we haven't really seen before or tempted, I, we really appreciate those kind of comments because obviously the, the number of games out there is a lot. And if you're not careful, you can, easily find yourself in drive through rpg kickstarter itch just like spending a lot of money on stuff that you have no idea if it's going to be any good or have a chance and when you run games you have a tendency to navigate towards games towards games well, i said that twice uh i'll say it again towards games that um <laughs> you you like like there's certain types of games that you have mm -hmm. in your head as ones that you like and so it's easy as for, for us to miss games that maybe we we are our normal it's just kind of a blind um, spot jam. for us because yeah. it's just yeah. It just we we so scooch please, over it yeah. yeah so please suggest them uh there's yeah. definitely ones that uh well, there's more games coming up um ones that we've keyed on as ones that we think we'll li mm -hmm. like um but if there's any suggestions out there uh please let us know yeah so with that um if you want to let us know those games jeff do you want to tell people how they can do that yeah look for at rollwise on facebook threads twitter or youtube and leave us a comment send us a message or you can email us if you have real long opinions at rollwiseguys at gmail.com. Uh, you can also what I was real... say is if you happen to have a game and you want to reach out to us, you can do that through email as oh, well. Yeah. 
as you well. know, like yeah. if you if you yeah. want us to to look at your game, uh, we've had a couple of people do that so far, and so we're we're taking an honest look. And you know, we don't want to we're we're like the we you know we want to get into any and all games. Like we don't have any biases against a game. We just may not necessarily gravitate towards it, as Brent had said. And most games will even say aren't bad. They're for someone, just maybe not for. Yeah, particularly. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. And if you have long comments, you can leave long comments too. I'll read them. Uh, mm -hmm. I do love our commenters. They have um, great opinions. So thank you for all of your comments lately. And as always, roll well, roll wise, and be safe out there, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank Thanks. you.